Hello everyone, Dominique Jacob here and I'm very excited to present in this video a new project which is called Land Hacking Project. It will be about exploiting and searching for vulnerabilities in a local area network and focusing mainly on the wireless part. The presentation as you are used to it's in Romanian but I will speak in English such that I can cover thoroughly the, the topic, okay? So I will present the project and the requirements, then how I solve the task and finally some conclusions and recommendations regarding the local area network security. First thing first, a big disclaimer. So what I'm showing you, it's in educational purposes. First of all, I'm using my own local area network to study. So I'm not attacking any other local area network which I do not own or I do not have authorization to do. Please do not try this on any other infrastructure that you feel like doing it because there are legal consequences to do that. So I am not responsible for your decisions. That's why I'm doing this and finally I'm giving recommendations such that you can apply them also in your company or even at home such that you can be safer because you are not aware of the vulnerabilities of wireless networks. Regarding the project and its requirements, basically it encompasses the knowledge and experience I've gained through networking, Linux and security concepts, mainly in a local area network, how to exploit and search for vulnerabilities and how to harden the security of the network. As I mentioned, we focus mainly on the wireless parts so on the Wi-Fi router and the tasks were divided into two parts. From the interior, basically we are inside the network and we search for vulnerabilities. Here it's a brief sketch of the devices in the local area network. It could be a Kali Linux virtual machine, even a smartphone, uh, Metasploitable 2, I will show you a bit regarding exploitation with a unusual tool, let's say, and a Windows 10 uh, virtual machine. Uh, whenever you see dot .10, it's not dot .10, it's dot .100 something, but due to changing addresses, I, I did not want to write the final number. Okay, so you see at 0 0.1 the IP address of the router and everything else is allocated dynamically via DHCP uh, routing protocol. And we have the LAN 192.168.0.0 with the mask of 24, which most of you are using. Now, the second task is from exterior. So tasks are divided from the exterior where Kali Linux is outside the network. It's trying to breach the network. And we see how can we do that exploiting vulnerabilities, okay? But no. a bit more thoroughly or detailed in terms of what I will actually do. So first of all, we have a denial of service attack, mainly DHCP starvation attack, which it's on the Wi-Fi router from Kali Linux, basically we will prevent the router from allocating any other IP address. So the devices that are in the local area network will be forced to not reach, basically will be prevented to reach the access to internet, okay? Then we have a man in the middle attack, DACP rogue server. We consider that we are basically the router, we fool another device, let's say a Windows 10 virtual machine, that instead of passing the 
traffic to the router and in the internet, it will pass through us and we will redirect it to the internet. Okay, that's why it's called row search. Then we will exploit search and exploit vulnerabilities in our router. Okay, and finally, we will launch a um, password attack, a dictionary using a dictionary such that we will try to obtain the credentials of some virtual machine router or Windows 10. Now from the exterior, as I mentioned, we want with Kali Linux to bridge inwards. So we will try to crack passwords, authentication passwords with brute force or password attack dictionary. And also we will try to exploit WPS a option in the router which comes from Wi-Fi protection setup and I will detail it a bit more when we will uh, launch that attack. Finally it will be a continuous denial of service attack preventing users to authenticate so they will be deauthenticated completely for a time period and lastly a man in the middle attack we will use a cafe captive portal for a device such that it thinks that uh, there will be a update for a firmware and it needs to type again the password and actually we will take that password so we will give this captive portal it will be um, using evil tool now having this that I suggest going to solve the task. So I will close this presentation and I will open it when the time comes. So I started a Kali virtual machine. So I started a Kali Linux virtual machine just a, a bit regarding the setup. I'm on Wi Fi. Okay. And for the interior, I don't need any other adapter, okay? So I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. If I want to check, I have for this, with Brilanga, we will discuss for the exterior part. I have 192.168.0.103. Okay, this is my my IP address for, for this. And while I'm launching also a Windows 10 virtual machine, I will show you the documentation which I've written in Notion. Okay, so the first attack is a DHCP starvation attack. As tool, we will use Yersinia and I will show you how to do it. I had some problems accessing the graphical interface. I could not do it from here. Okay, so I cannot launch it. It launches this basically, which is Yasinia minus I. Even if I type Yasinia minus G, it's not the old version, which is from 2017, 0.8.2. Okay, so briefly, okay, I will. Yeah, C minus Y. Okay. I want it just to be a bit bigger. So this is launching. Here we want a DHCP type attack, so I need to type F2. Again F2. I typed F2 and I reach DHCP mode. If I type H to see the manual, basically I want to go to X to see the available attacks. And I will choose this, sending discover packets from Dora, discover, offer, request of knowledge. Just before this to set up the Windows 10 virtual machine. Firstly, I will just a bit to start. I want to allocate a static, a static address and I will leave it a bit such that I won't have a 
network connection to make sure that the attack is successful. However, the internet will fail. Okay, so if I need to pause it and restart it, it's due to this reason. Okay. And I'm allocating statically because I will need to have this also in the next attack. Okay, let's say 20. Subnet mask it's this dot zero one it's my router and I will type also for the DNS one because if I type zero eight 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 for example it won't work successfully because I have um, complicated infrastructure here and we have local DNS and it doesn't know which one is correct and it won't work so i will have connectivity you will see even for the next attack i will have connectivity with ping but i will not be able to access a site due to dns mapping okay so this just one second to check this ip config slash all okay so i have this address everything is okay now let's launch the attack with yes and i will open another another um, tab and i will open wireshark okay so i will which is Now we have other also other packets. Yes. Okay. Now, now and if we want to we look at this. It should work. As you've seen, it's just another IP, but it works, okay? Now, ping, working. 
Okay. Work. Okay. Perfect. I will put. I will leave it like this. I will put it against that cut just to, to be sure. And we will move to the next one. Zero 20 subnet mask before gateway one as as we mentioned. Okay. Working okay. Perfect. Now the next attack it will be using again Yasinia, but it will be a DHCP rogue server and in the middle type attack. Okay. I have problems with DNS mapping as I mentioned, and I have found two ways of doing this creating a DHCP server in Kali Linux or using Yasinia to do that. Lately, when I, I tested in this configuration, so at my office, I could not start the DHCP server from Yasinia in a simple configuration back home it works. So I will, I will do this instead, okay? Creating my own servers. First thing first, we need to install the ISCP DHCP server. Okay, so I will go do this. It's already installed, so if there are still some dependencies, will be there aren't. Okay, after this, we need to go in ATC in DHCP DHCP configure. Okay, so file. Okay, and let's say with no, no. No. The HCP, okay, list files, no, no, the H C dot conf okay and here it's a basic subnet declaration usually you can take it copy it and do it your own so I've done it my own basically having again the same 192.168.0.0 network but I'm allocating only the range for these 10 addresses okay only 10 from 150 to 159. Uh, the DNS server is 8888, and the option for the router is 6.103. Actually, it should be the IP address of Kali. Let's see it again 103. Okay, it's correct. Here I can try to put 103, so the same IP address. It might work. If I put the IP address of the router, it will pass only through the router so i'm trying with this as i said it works but just the dns mapping doesn't. this i will need to leave it as it is then we need to go to this folder okay this no, no. interfaces and here I needed to add these two lines, okay, so it was only for interface L0, I needed to add auto ET0, my interface that I'm using to generate the DHCP server, and also this line, okay, for INET the DHCP um, service, so I needed to add this, then I needed to go here in ISCP, uh, ISC DHCP server in default file okay and we are not going here just here list list files I see okay. I see okay. 
and here it wasn't written anything for I interfaces uh, v4 okay so for ip4 i needed to write the same interface eta0 on which i'm using to which i'm using to generate the um, dhcp service okay the, so this i needed to fix and lastly i needed to start the service and i can use this okay copy paste It started and if I put status instead of start, you see that it runs. Okay, it's active, it's running, and we can perform the attack with it with your scene. So here I can go X and I can again send discover packets instead of creating the HP log server because I created the server, okay. So I basically only need to send an attack. I will choose one. And after this, I will basically switch from statical to dynamical allocation, okay? Just to see who will become the default gateway. Unidentified network. it do something okay it's it it's in uh, 158 which we allocated but it's not correct So I did it again and changed the address by renewing while having the attack. So I did not stop the attack. That's what I needed to do. And just with renew, not changing anything, you see that it's again the same address, but the default gateway is dot zero three. So the attack is successful passing through us. Okay, to Kali Linux. Let's try it's okay however by default one thing that it's not it wasn't mentioned it's routing option and we need to enable the routing option in Kali Linux such that it performs like a router if it's disabled basically we are not being able to Take the traffic from the internet and uh, passing back to the Windows 10 virtual machine. So the, um, the connection will not work properly. By default, I have let it um, enabled. And you see here with this comment. So if I'm checking, okay, I haven't written anything uh, in this file it's number one number one is by default working for routing number zero the routing is disabled yes and it's not still working no okay and if it's zero you need to specify echo one to be written in this okay so that's why i have connectivity again if I will show you with Google, it won't be able to access it, or at least from my understanding until now, due to that problem with the DNS server, okay? 
as I mentioned. But I have connectivity. You see that I can reach the internet is due to my infrastructure. So I consider also this. You see, the gateway it's Linux, and this is the problem because it doesn't recognize properly the DNS. Okay. I consider also this um, attack successful, and I suggest going to the next attack. The next attack is exploiting the router or searching for the vulnerabilities for the router using another tool called Router Exploit, similar with Metasploit in metasploitable framework okay for this i will close wireshark because it will take a lot of resources do not save but it should reduce and also the camera should work okay fine this i think closed and i will also stop the dhcp Okay, also this is stopped, and we can okay, clear war effect. No, for router exploit, where am I? Router exploit, okay, router exploit. First, you need to install it so git com you need to use this command i won't do it again because it's already installed then uh, the network okay because we're inside the network let's let's check in another tab the network we can map i will search like this okay uh which is searching not that static because i'm passing through uh, considering all the machines online and i'm just searching okay while this is running and finished i see that i have a tp link router this is the mac address and these are the ports which are open okay and some some other devices like a phone, a Huawei phone, which we will use for Caspix portals, another an, uh, another machine, 158, which is the Windows, and 103, which is um, actually my personal phone, 102, I think it's the, the host, I'm not sure. Okay, let's go to Routers, but to, to start Routers, but you need to start it like that, or if you give permission you can write like this okay if not search we will search with a scanner because there are several options okay i remembered so you need to type show scanners and show all this okay so we will use okay so i remember the command it was uh, show scanners to see the scanners we will use scanners and it will be also on this. now show options to see the options for the scanner this we will leave it by default because i have for http 2 and i have the port which is the default one Port number 80, I just need to specify the target. So set target 192.168.0.1. Okay. Now show options. Okay. Perfectly. It took target run. And it will scan for vulnerability that out. Okay. And there will be a vulnerability which will be with green and which will be listed downwards you see that it's uh, searching for a different type of vulnerabilities function of the um, manufacturer the ports so on and so forth and we just need to, to wait a few more seconds and it will finish
I'm pausing it and starting when it's finished. Okay, it took just a bit more seconds, so we found this vulnerability, okay? So on this target, on port 80, this vulnerability. So, use, use, exploits, routers, and this, not this, I want this, this, okay. show options. I need to specify again set target one show options everything else is set I just need to run it and the vulnerability worked actually we are in command line so we have reduced privileges let's say that's what happened now in order to inject the payload we must see what payloads are available okay show payloads we can use this or this uh, they are similar the bind tcp we are binding it or reverse tcp we are using the tar the target and recalling a reverse shell session let's use exploit this one i think this is the common if not so options, just one second, yes, Uh, set set payload. Yes, set payload. Yes. Okay, perfect. We now enter the payload, show options, and I need to set the L host. The L host is basically the IP address of the host, in this case the card. So one, two, one, two, three, zero, zero dot. One more thing, okay. L port it remains the encoder, it's the default one, okay. And we can run the running, and you'll see something interesting. The exploit failed to, to, to transfer payload, basically, it's vulnerable to the. Um, to this, how oh, it's called in CC series, the moon RCE. However, at one point in time, I updated the firmware. So basically, I updated and patched the router. So it's not vulnerable to this type of payload. You can enter it in command line, but it cannot do anything more. Okay, which is a good thing. We want to see this. If not, we would have accessed the, let's say, the password list, so on and so forth. So we could have exploited a lot in terms of vulnerability. Now, I will go back. The same it's with the other payload. I won't uh, try it again. But I will show you an alternative to use this tool, which is quite interesting, okay? You can use this tool on other machines. That's it. Back. Uh, and instead of Kali, I will start a instead of using it on. Um, I think I can close the Windows 10 virtual machine. Instead of using the router as target, I will set up a metasploitable tool okay and i will search with and map again for the ip just to be very clear now this is the next type of scanner 
not crack, but RS. No, not just yet. Okay. okay, perfectly. Show options. And here, instead of that target, just the new starts. I will search for metasploitable, okay? With nmap on the end, just to make sure everything is okay. Good. And map. I will pause it and come back. Okay, coming back. I needed to change the, the scan. So I searched with SS. I thought this was metasploitable with 104. I search aggressively and indeed here we have Metasploit. Okay, so I have a lot of vulnerabilities here in terms of ports and I will do this. This I will close and we need to set target on 104. Perfect. So options. Okay. Run. And you will see a bit more vulnerabilities than for the router which is as expected okay but it's an interesting tool to use it like that i will pause it and come back after it finishes finally it took a bit longer than expected i thought it well, something went wrong and i cancel it and run it again okay but we have a lot of vulnerabilities so basically we have ssh telnet ftp credentials which can be exploited okay and here actually it found the credential so if i want to log in with let's say username root and password root on telnet service i can do that and i will show you here okay so all on telnet And open one one six eight zero one zero four. Okay, and what? Good. Good. And good. You see that I have access. Okay, exit clear and let's say I want using uh, SSH with uh, user user okay SSH uh, with service okay service but 104 okay the key change I need to, to reconfigure the key but uh, this works so that's the that's the thing we can do it let's say with user but i need to regenerate the key i won't do that because i don't want to lose that you've seen with telnet basically it's possible okay now i consider also this um, this attack successful and we will go to the next one which is password attack okay now Given the fact that we search for vulnerabilities for the router, if there were something would have appeared in uh, router exploit or even in Nmap, but let's try directly a brute force attack, okay? And I will close this. Let's say this one, okay? So I, 
I went in uh, my documentation and I'm using Hydra as tool. I've shown the use of Hydra in my first project, the Cybersecurity Masterclass project. I won't go into much detail, you can see documentation there. So I used the command Hydra and I've picked basically a top username shortlist from the web, from GitHub, and I'm using a username shortlist and a password shortlist minus E option to check for non, null and reverse, okay, on not this target, but Yes, on uh, on the router, sorry, on SSH, because I've seen with NMAP that on the router I still have SSH port open. Okay, so let's try to do that. And verbose, and I can route, write the, the output. Okay, and using Hydra. Meanwhile, I will show you the what is okay. It's something simple. Okay, this is a password list and the top username short list. It's okay. Going back to this, uh, look, it found it found this on priority 2 on 0 0.1 with admin and admin I can confirm that it is okay and I will leave it to, to finish one, two, one, six, six, zero, one. okay let's try with admin and You see it worked okay so attack was successful brute force attack this is my router okay now we may consider that the attack i will stop it okay uh all the attacks in the first parts of funding tier was successful. We will go into this. Okay. What's interesting here that from the exterior, you cannot access just by uh, exploiting some things because you will not have access. By default, most um, NIC cards, so basically the wireless adapters, which are integrated, work only in manage mode. We have two modes, manage mode and monitor mode. Manage mode uh, captures the traffic that's intended only for that device. Monitor mode can detect all the traffic in LAN. That's the thing. That's why you cannot use a wireless adapter in manage mode to detect the traffic on other um, and exploit other networks okay because it's the traffic is intended for you while the monitor mode allows this and to do that you need an external adapter and I have this this one it's from alpha network okay it's like this it's a simple one you can buy also from peopling this works Okay, from my testing with um, Kali Linux, but you have a limit for this one with one antenna, it's only on 2.4 gigahertz and up to uh, VPA2, WPA2 in terms of security encryption, other have also WPA3 and also work on 5 gigahertz and also I think more depending on what you are looking for. So this we need to set up. in the virtual box as an external adapter and Wi-Fi one and it will be here with um, Wi-Fi 2 
and in Kali Linux I will set it like here on USB okay and if I go in Kali Linux to, to this I can close also this to show you I will put IFW config this is my wireless adapter and it's in manage mode by default okay and I need to put it one so the first attack it will be a cracking attack and I will use air crack a manual uh, method and for this I need to put the adapter in what we call monitor mode so we can check with IW config we already did that First, we need to kill some uh, processes with Ermon check kill. Okay, this is from the suit of face. So it killed these processes. Now we can say Ermon ng start w lan zero it started okay from Teros. this is that and if we want to see status or just let's check it with IW config we see that we have monitor perfect now we can search okay and we will search with aerodump another tool and here are the networks that are near me and with that adapter I can search with other I can't okay and I will close this interesting it's this one okay it shows also the encryption okay so we have WPA3, WPA2, WPA2 is the most common okay we had the cipher we have, we have authentication using pre-shared key we have the channel channel 2 and we have the power which should be higher depending on the location okay and we have the bss id which is the mac address that's what we need now after that i need to target what i want to target which is my router which is this one okay we'll use this command okay the purpose of this is to obtain the handshake the handshake is basically the method of gaining access between a device and the wireless network further details are in the article provided on my website or the article on linkedin okay in terms of details now we will want to specify for example a file name let's say um, tp link Hack. okay it will write a ccap file okay the channel number which here is number channel 2 okay and the bss id which is this one okay copy selection paste and while i'm doing this i need to open another tab and we need to deauthenticate a user this is another phone that i use just for this purpose and actually these are all the devices which are logged to my network so this it's the i need to check the mac address of this and i think this one it's the mac address okay I will do it and I will see that I will be um, deauthenticated and when I will come back you will see here a handshake basically what I want to obtain. For this I need a new command which is this one. Here, okay, deauthenticate. Let's say we go with default option which is zero, the Mac, the mac i will call the router which is this one okay one second okay. 
in this perfect and minus h we need to target an IP address of the device which should be this one and I will I'm a bit let's say lazy or well, I want to do it fast I can not here network Which is this one? Because we need to copy it. Hopefully, it, it will work. Three A, three A dot F A two dots eight to five eight. video back uh, when I de-authenticated and used that command because I thought it was a mistake at first uh, I basically sent it here to de-authenticate all the users so just not a target only the router but all the devices in that network, okay? So that's why even with my phone, with my filming, it de-authenticated that I needed to reconnect back to that network, okay? Uh, this, it's automatically on my uh, laptop, but that I needed to specify. No, going back. And going back to Wireshark, again, we will search for EA poll for the four message, messages for the poll with handshake and usually in message number three, you see here in protocol 800.1x here with key data. So basically this we want to crack. Now, there are several options here. Okay, we can use air crack for a, a let's say, a dictionary attack and this, I will do it quite fast okay air crack file name which the file name needs to be this one okay copy okay the password list it's this and it should work key font You'll see why it found it. I know I added there. It's just 
a purpose. You can use, for example, a dictionary with uh, millions and millions of lines and it will take the time function of your capabilities like heart. Okay? I will talk in the end regarding this, but this is how you can do it. Now, another option is to use another tool, which is a bit more interesting, AirGAD. So for AirGAD, then we have the same monitor mode. You have to install it like that and run a script. I will do it quite fast. I have it here. No. Air, air, get them. Air, get them. Okay. So it's a bit more interesting to use, but the principle is the same. Okay. So here are the tools that you need to install if something is not okay or with red, something like that. It's update. I don't want to update because it's looking for a new version. Okay. Now, what interface I will use? The third one, okay. It's in monitor mode. If it weren't in monitor mode, you should put it with option three, uh, two, sorry. And what you want to use in terms of attack? A handshake or PM kit attack. Okay, so option number five. Then, Let's say what targets we need to explore for, okay? Four. And here will be the targets. I know what I'm looking for. I can close it, okay? And I'm looking for target number six, okay? Now, I want to capture the handshake, so I will choose option six. Enter. And what type of attack? It will be a bit authentication attack, so type one. Let's say 35 seconds. Okay, so we did that automatically. Okay, now we have the hand. Okay, so we did that automatically, we have the handshake, successful, then we can go back and offline WPA2, option 6, attack, a personal, then we can use whatever we want from here. If we use a brute force attack or a dictionary attack. Now, side note, you can use hashcat and use your GPU, it will work. A lot faster these are the key things I wanted to address and for example you can use a virtual machine in cloud with a very very strong uh, graphical card and you will be amazed on how quickly it will crack password and indeed this is a big problem okay I will use the same type of attack just to prove it a bit more simple so I will use just one second let's say a dictionary type with air crack An option number or with hash let's take hash cat but dictionary type so option three okay yes we have the captured file Yes, we have the ID, the path of the dictionary file. Desktop, Wi Fi, okay, PWD, I said, copy, paste. Start 
cache that store using GPU. My experience is that in the virtual machine, uh, the GPU is not used properly, but I managed to do it in the local on the local machine on the Windows. If this doesn't work, we will choose another attack and do it. Okay, because it's basically the the same password we already found it with Hydra. But I just wanted to prove the the thing. And I will come back after this image. Okay, let's start with Let's start with another uh, attack. This one, okay. One, yes, yes. No, it doesn't work. Okay, so as using the other attack with air crack within Elgadon, and again it found quickly that password. Okay, if I want to save it, yes, okay, and now I can close it. Okay, welcome back with another attack, and this one. It's the WPS attack or the attack on the Wi-Fi protected, protected setup. Okay, this is a very common vulnerability and can be exploited very simple. I need to restart the configuration. And I wanted to enter in the uh, configuration of the router, okay, on 192.168.0.1. And we see here some data regarding the router, the name, the mode, also on what channel it runs, and also the Mac. Now I want to show you what WPS represents. Basically, it is activated and can be changed, the pin can be changed and de deactivated. So what's with this um, option? Basically, it is used if we want to add the network a printer or other kind of device where we just need to hold on a button for several minutes on, on a LED and on, on a LED and it will connect using this pin, it will connect automatically. The problem with this is that the pin is uh, it's made from numbers, it's an 8 uh, digit pin and if it's not deactivated it can be easily cracked and if it's not changed, you can enter the network each time using this pin. Okay, I wanted to show you to show you this this problem, this vulnerability. And to do that, we have several options uh, using the the river, uh, either a independent tool in Kali pre-installed or AirGather. The same using river in and get a launch gripper or even pull. I will launch either of those. However, you see a protection that's implemented in my router against that. So even though I have activated WPS, you will see that. So we need to go back in the terminal and check for the wireless adapter. Okay, we need to Kill the processes before starting the mode. Okay, so start monitor mode. Let's manage now. If I check, I have monitor mode perfectly. Now I want to use the wash tool. 
the watch tool basically checks uh, if there is WPS setup active. Okay, so we will use this line. Okay, wash minus pi and the inter. Okay, and now it will search for the route. Well, it's, it's fine the first one and now I will close you see that from printer so on and we will obtain basically the MAC address of the router that I want to export okay this is the, um, the TP link router and yes it's uh, the WPS activated on it okay as we can see now we will launch Reaper with this And you'll see very interesting here that the access point rate limiting was detected. So there is implemented a measure to counteract that um, problem of finding out cracking the pin. It's basically a brute force attack because it would have some worth of about 11,000 um, combinations that the, the software needs to, to run to obtain the pin. However, after trying one or two times, because it will pause for 60 seconds before rechecking, it will shut down. Okay, I will let it a bit more. And meanwhile, I will start again and do the same thing to see it even in a more advanced tool. the result is the same okay you see it was the second time and then it will exit starting again interface 3 it needs to be in monitor mode it is okay and we will perform a wps attack so number eight for effect we need to explore for targets number four okay and now it started to search it found the the tp link router we can close it okay and we'll select target number two okay this is number two. number two locked we want to continue and afterwards what type of attack okay here it is in terms of pixie dust attack we can use this for brute force pin attack to obtain the pin afterwards we can launch another known pin database attack and with that pin we can even extract the credentials of logging in with admin rights and so on and so forth okay now i will try only the pixie dust attack and i will choose number a okay continue we have the pssid we have also the channel let's say 50 seconds we have also here it, it will say if it, it if it will find the um, the code okay the basically the pin on that text file everything is set we can continue and you'll see it found again that rate limiting okay and here i will stop okay i will try also with bully but i did not have any any chance okay the thing is that you can leave it running for time and for sure it will find out the print. That's the, the problem if it's not implemented this. Okay. Okay, here I need to close this. Okay. Close this window. 
let's say shows brute force spin attack with 10 okay yes <coughs> you see now that it brute force it brute forces but again it has some difficulty in sending the packets and at several iterations you will see 0% complete and you can leave it it will retry and retry and retry but due to that implemented measure you cannot crack basically that okay so that was I think implemented by default like patch once I updated the, the firmware uh, in some, some time ago now I will close this because it will not go any further. This is the attack. So unfortunately it's not successful, but it proved that we have some measures that are actively engaging in preventing this attack. Okay. Now we will go onwards with another type of attack, this for cracking the text with denial of service attack continuously deauthenticating other users using a shell script okay written in bash okay now I will exit yes here okay. for that I need to go on desktop back desktop Wi-Fi project and basically I will need to run this DOS uh, Wi-Fi.sh let's see it so using this shipping for bash I will iterate up to 1000 times an air replay attack as the one used when I deauthenticated all my uh, devices like all the phones even the camera on this route once I will do that, my video again will drop, but I will leave it such that you can see the that I won't have internet, so everyone will be deauthenticated, okay, from um, outside the from gaining access in the um, in the network, basically, okay. No. Let's st uh, let's start the attack. We have everything here. Also in monitor mode. It started. So we see we have monitor mode. Okay, and let's check error dump. Minus ng, and we want to search with only this. Okay, I found what I wanted, which is this network. Okay, and I need to take the MAC address and put it in that script, and then run the script. Okay, so basically, this this is what we need to do, and the channel number needs to be number two in this case okay so we should go here it's not specified but let's say for the sake of it running the attack Okay, I needed to change the channel on which the attack was performed because here it showed that 
the interface was on channel 6 and the S access point. The router uses channel 2, so I needed to start the interface on channel 2 again and then use the, um, the script. And I will do it again. Okay. Problem solved. Okay, so this was continuous authentication. We've seen all the devices were the authenticated once the access was gained, and we can proceed to the final attack, which is a captive port or attack using an evil twin um, server, an evil twin option, and it's with the tool air getter. It's quite an interesting attack and I will launch it in so I need to go back to air again and while this launches I will just present a bit of attack. Basically we will fool a device that we want to attack. In this case it will be this device, this phone, and it will be fooled that instead of an actual uh, the actual network, another network with the same name will be created which will be without password and it will require the device to authenticate and it will display what's very interesting it will display a message as a firmware update and it won't disappear until the correct password will be uh, implemented and after that everything it's it will disappear so basically it will go back to the original access point and you won't even know what happened and I will show you a few pictures uh, which are snapshots from my screen screenshots okay and it will show basically how it will look on the phone now let's start Ergeton and the evil twin attack it started just to make sure that I have this Okay, it's on TP Link. Okay, I do not want to reinstall. Latest version. Interface 3, it's in monitor mode. Okay, and we have option 7 Evil Twin Attacks. And the most interesting one is this one captive port okay so option none okay from wp up to wp2 and 3 it already found out the network which is number four this one i need i want to attack okay number four and we will use a deauthentication disassociation attack okay so number okay do I want to integrate denial of service pursuit mode? So if the router changes channel, do you want to do that? In this case, no, I just want to do it very simple. I do not want to spoof my MAC address of the router, but I can do that if it's necessary. Okay. I do not have a captured handshake. No, I want to capture a handshake. Let's say 50 seconds. It will do authenticate, okay. Not 
back. Okay, so we have the hand shape. Perfectly, it will generate here a text file with the password if it succeeds. Okay, I need to give permission to write. In what language I want to have the portal, let's say English number one. And here I can even opt for a, an advanced captive portal. I want to that, it's just a simple one. Okay. And now it launches basically the attack. Open browser. I know that's all because This and yes, you to It's reconnected, and you see, you've seen that I basically found out the password. And what I did not mention is that that window will not disappear until I introduce my password. And my password is here, basically. Even print capture you see the password. You've seen what I use. So yes, this is the password. That's actually also the PIN, numerical password. Okay. These are basically the attacks that I wanted to present today. Okay. Now we will go back to the presentation. Just one second. I finish this, this I can close. Okay, we will go quickly to the conclusion. Starting the conclusions. After performing the performing the attacks, basically we showed the vulnerabilities of a local area network, how vital is the security made be for a home user or a company or an institution. Okay. Now several attacks have been executed, so basically we tested for different vulnerabilities from inside and outside gaining access exploiting vulnerabilities on router 
gaining credentials, so on and so forth. I want to recommend now some solutions, given the fact that I presented all these attacks. What I want shortly to mention is the fact that these are not the only attacks that may be performed. You can even play with something like crack attack, which exploits the vulnerability of how the three-way, three-way, uh, four-way handshake of the WEA2 encryption method. It's in wireless protection, wireless standard, and uh, some routers are vulnerable, some not. Okay. Now, even if you have, let's say, a password that you think it's safe, but it doesn't contain special characters, and I will go deep into, into this in the recommendations part, keep in mind that some can take offline handshakes and just, as I mentioned, rent a, a virtual machine in cloud with a lot of performance and just try to crack your password so it's a big deal in how you are securing your network okay now in terms of recommendations you can update your firmware and your software okay the devices in the network like the routers patches for devices for computers phones and so on and so forth okay you should use strong passwords. Recommends, uh, I recommend using a password manager. Try to not use the same password for different applications or accounts. And use at least 12, 16, 20 characters length passwords with special characters and so on. You can even try to use words in other languages if you want. No, you should stop the services that you not use. For example, if you do not use SSH or FTP on certain devices, you should stop that services. You should use encryption methods, WPA2, WPA3. However, for WPA3, not all devices are compatible with that encryption method. Activate the firewall for sure, even in um, the router option, I have the firewall, I can activate it. I have also other options, you'll see immediately. You should use VPN for working. I recommend that even if you have something that you do not give so much importance, but I think it's necessary for transactions, let's say, it's mandatory in my point of view. Use multi-factor authentication. This is, again, mandatory because you can crack the password, but at least you have several options that prevent the attacker to gain access to your account. Deactivate WPS option in routers. You've seen how sensible it is and if you do not have the rate limiting option implemented for sure you'll gain access pretty quickly it's just a matter of time avoid using local networks in public places which are not secure you can log in and uh, start up wireshark and you can see a lot of traffic that passes activate dhcp snooping to prevent other users from snooping the IPs and port security to limit the number of MAC addresses per port. So basically avoid other attacks on, uh, on the LAN, okay? Some other attacks can be performed. For companies even use an IDS or an IPS in the situation, okay? These were the conclusions, the recommendations to harden a local area network, especially due to the wireless part. You've seen how vulnerable it is. Thank you for staying with me.
until now hopefully it was uh, insightful useful and we'll see at our next encounter with a new project thank you very much bye bye